Group health and dental benefits are the most popular features of a benefit plan because they're provided knowingly to be consumed. Some basic terms include medically necessary, which requires a treatment to be medically necessary to be eligible for reimbursement, mirroring Revenue Canada's guidelines in the Income Tax Act. Additionally, providers use reasonable and customary, which limits eligible expenses to the amounts that's reasonable based on the adjudicator's database, which is proprietary and different for each provider. Out-of-pocket refers to the portion the member pays that is not covered by the program. And coordination of benefits is the process of managing the claim where there is more than one plan in force covering the claimant. There is a lovely 12-page guide created by the Canadian Life and Health Insurance Association explaining this process in more detail. The alternative benefit clause refers to limitations of payment to the least costly option for care. And the explanation of benefits is a notification provided by the payer regarding the amounts paid by the plan as well as the out-of-pocket amounts with an explanation of what wasn't paid and why. It's important plan members keep those explanation of benefits for qualification for the medical tax credit at the end of the year. Common cost containment features in health and dental plans include flat deductibles, which are the thresholds at which nuisance claims, nuisance claims are not paid. This approach is becoming obsolete as plan sponsors look to other approaches that keep abreast of inflation. Reimbursement levels or the reverse stated coinsurance relates to the amount that the plan may reimburse for an eligible claim and the corresponding amount that the plan member may be out of pocket. Premium cost sharing refers, refers to contributory plans whereby the plan member may share a portion of the premium costs. Documenting this and managing the costs are critically important for plan sponsors. Most insured group plans contractually require a minimum of 50% employer funding of premiums. Failure to meet this standard may result in termination of coverage. Drugs typically represent 75% of all health care claims within the plan and include a number of features. They may include reimbursement levels that limits the reimbursement to a specified percent percentage resulting in an out-of-pocket expense to the claimant. There may be dispense fee or markup or ingredient cost limits. Those three things drive the cost of prescription drugs. Formulary management aims to limit access to newer or more expensive drugs. Mandatory substitution forces members to take a lower cost alternative to a drug which often means generic. Some plans provide for a tiered tiered formulary, which reimburses different classes of drugs at different levels to more equitably manage the costs across the plan membership. Some plans may limit eligible vaccines. Frozen formularies limit access to only those drugs listed at the time the formulary is struck. Therefore, no new drugs are added. Some plans do not allow for direct payment to pharmacies in an effort to reduce claims through plan members' failure to submit. In the industry, we refer to that as the shoebox effect. Lifestyle drugs are often packaged together for inclusion or exclusion, and prior authorization is a process that limits access to drugs based on additional medical evidence to support the eligibility on a patient-by-patient -patient basis. Most providers outsource the drug plan management to a third-party pharmacy benefit manager like a Green Shield, TELUS, ESI, or Claim Secure. Hospital is one of those sacred cow benefits that provides for private or semi-private room reimbursement over and above that standard provincial coverage for ward room. Typically, the patient is not allowed to submit claims for living expenses like TV or phone. Any medications or treatments provided in hospital would not be covered by the benefit plan and are reimbursed by the provincial programs. Paramedical services include non-dentist and doctor charges outside of an inpatient or hospital setting. Typically, these services represent 15 to 25 percent of health care expenses incurred within the plan. And along with dental and vision, these three types of services are seeing a dramatic upward trend versus other expenses like prescription drugs. Coverage often includes a per year per practitioner per family member maximum like $500, but could also include a per visit maximum and a combined maximum across all practitioners in an attempt to limit the exposure and costs of the plan. 
Vision care is a popular benefit, especially those needing corrective lenses, and can include lenses, frames, contact lenses, eye exams, and laser eye surgery. Expenses are typically limited to those provide, provided, or sorry, prescribed by a licensed optometrist or ophthalmologist. Coverage is usually limited to a fixed dollar amount over a fixed period, like $200 every two years per family member, and can be different for dependent children due to the rapid vision changes through aging. Contact lenses are typically included. Health plans typically include additional services and supplies and are often second pair to any government program paying for durable medical equipment like provincial assistive devices programs. Out-of-province coverage is typically included, which reduces the need for eligible plan members to source coverage for personal or business travel. The key to coverage is that the claim is an emergency. No medical tourism is covered and the claim is unforeseen. Referral coverage is available when eligible treatment is unavailable in the province of residence and the provider will pay for costs over and above the provincial health care of province of residence. Members are covered as long as their pre-existing medical condition is stable, meaning no change in medication or treatment for a period immediately preceding travel which is also a standard requirement for provincial health care coverage. And most providers outsource the management of out-of-province coverage to specialists like Alliance. Members should also be aware of the right of subrogation, which most plans have that dictate the cascading payment protocol where multiple providers are in place at time of claim.